No Time to Explain has revealed itself, so let's start this new mission. First up, you needed to have gotten the three dead memories from the Paradox story mission from the daily the last time it was the daily. If you go get the ghosts on one day, like today, you can't go do the next part of the quest on the same day. I'm not sure what the time gate is on this. It could be the next day, it could be next reset, it could be the next time Paradox is the daily mission, so just keep your eyes open. Anyway, once you're eligible, Lakshmi 2 of Future War Cult will have a quest waiting for you. You'll need to get 1,000 reputation with Future War Cult. You're going to need to pledge their faction in order to do this. The quest is not going to unlock unless you pledge. 1,000 rep is equal to 50 motes of light, 350 weapon parts, etc. Motes are probably going to be your easiest way through this. The next part requires you to kill a major or ultra taken minotaur. The easiest way to do this is to go to Venus and wait for one of the taken public events. You can kill a major minotaur aka a lieutenant. Ultras also work like the one at the end of the Paradox daily mission after you collect the fragments. It'll drop a simulation core and you just need to shatter it aka discard it from your inventory. After that, head back to Lakshmi and she is going to tell you to go into the Vault of Glass and kill Atheon. It does not need to be hard mode or anything like that, you just need to get in there and kill Atheon. Atheon will then drop his eye and you should destroy this in the same way as the Simulation Core, just discard it. Head back to Lakshmi after that for the next step, which will take you into the Twilight Gap. You'll spawn into the Twilight Gap in a giant pool of light. This will cleanse you from the Shadow of Oryx debuff. The Shadow of Oryx debuff will slowly turn your screen black, making it impossible to see. If your screen goes completely black, you're gonna die. Basically, you need to hop from light pool to light pool until you find a chest which will end the mission. The chest spawns in a random location, but the pools of light will generally take you in the direction of where the chest is. Mine ended up by the special ammo by C Flag, but some people had theirs on the heavy ammo on C side, on the C Flag itself, etc. This whole part should only take a couple of minutes or so. Once you grab those items from the chest, head back to Lakshmi once again for the next part. She will now tell you to go to the Black Garden to investigate the Groundskeeper. Basically, you're gonna kill it. This is a 290 light mission also, so make sure you're high enough. This mission is actually somewhat difficult. You might want to bring some friends. In order to spawn the Groundskeeper, you'll need to anger him by just killing stuff. Goblins will only give you a percent or two, but once Minotaurs start spawning, it'll go a lot faster. Thing is that the Minotaurs are not gonna stop spawning, and there's a lot of them. I mean a lot of Minotaurs. Focus as much as you can on the boss because the Minotaurs seem to just spawn forever, and in very, very large quantities. It might be triggered by the boss's health, I'm not too sure, but it's gonna be pretty rough in there. Once you kill the boss, you're done though, so just beast your way through it. After that, head back to Lakshmi and you will be rewarded with no time to explain. No arc damage on it, I know that was a data mind kind of rumored thing, so yeah, it's not there, I guess things change. The main bonuses on the weapon are full auto and rewind again, where every precision hit will return its shot to the magazine, and this doesn't come from your reserves, it's generated. It comes with 24 shots in the magazine and is a mid-rate of fire, mid-impact pulse rifle like the Smite of Moraine and the new Iron Banner pulse rifle, Nearwind's Mercy. There's not a ton of recoil on this thing, at least compared to Smite of Moraine, which feels very bouncy. In PvE, I expect this weapon to perform on almost equal footing in terms of damage compared to Smite of Moraine. Obviously, the benefit on No Time to Explain is that if you can hit constant headshots, you're not going to have to reload as often, which means more uptime, which means more damage, which is always good. I played with it in PvP for a couple of games, and it basically performs as expected. 22 to the body and 33 to the head, meaning two burst kills are possible on very low armor targets, but I would not rely on it happening every time. Otherwise, this weapon performs almost like the Nearwind's Mercy, almost like any other pulse rifle of its variety, the mid-rate of fire, mid-impact style. I would not call it overpowered in the slightest, it's not terrible, not sure if it's really a top tier weapon though. I just don't think the precision hits bonus is going to be as helpful in PvP as it will be in PvE. I personally don't like the sites on No Time to Explain as much as, say, something like a Red Dot site. There's a lot going on with the site, and that caused me to sometimes lose track of my target or what's going on near them. For others, this might not be a problem, but I imagine this is mainly going to be a personal preference thing. Now versus something like Bad Juju, Bad Juju is designed to be a super killing machine with its infinitely reloading bonuses as well. The advantages I'd say No Time to Explain has over the Bad Juju is that it's slightly better at farther ranges and is definitely way better against bosses. 
But if you're in a large group of enemies and at a reasonable range where bad juju is fully effective, I'm not sure if I'm using no time to explain over bad juju. Bad Juju will completely restore all ammo on a kill, whereas No Time to Explain only gives ammo when you get precision hits. Bad Juju also has the benefit of giving you tons of super energy as well, so I think there are certain times where you'd want to use No Time to Explain over Bad Juju, but there's also plenty of times where you'd want to use Bad Juju over No Time to Explain. Overall, I think the weapon appears to be good. In PvP, it can certainly handle its own, although I personally prefer Nerwin's Mercy with a red dot. The bonuses aren't really anything amazing for PvP. Full Auto is really good on the fast rate of fire pulses, but the mid rate and low rate of fire ones don't really need it. In PvE, it can be potentially better than Smite of Moraine, which I really like as a weapon, but I'll need a little more experience with no time to explain. Didn't really get to play with it too much in anything high end in PvE, but I'm hopeful that it can be at least a contender. Anyway guys, that is how you get no time to explain. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.